We're not doing concrete today. Today, we're playing with lasers. Need I say more? But today, I'm gonna show you how to do and make a bunch of cool things with a laser pecker too. So let's make something cool. Now, I know that a laser engraver is not on brand for this channel, but what you have to understand is I get an overwhelming amount of emails from companies wanting me to review their products, and I turn most of them down. But uh, this one, <laughs> I just couldn't pass up. So uh, a quick thank you to Maggie from Laser Pecker for sending us this unit to play with and uh, <clears throat> uh, do a, a serious review on. The Laser Pecker 2. It is a portable laser engraver that can engrave just about any material within a four inch by four inch space. But it is not limited to that space. More on that in a bit. As far as a box opening is concerned, nobody likes box openings anymore. What, what's in the box? This is in the box. So the unit, it, it comes with the engraving unit. They send you some safety goggles, which uh, is very, very important with lasers, by the way. Uh, they, they send you a couple of different practice materials. They send you some thin plywood and uh, some do uh, metal dog tags to practice with. And of course, it comes with the uh, AC adapter, which by the way, this can be plugged into a regular 110 outlet, which is really cool. I have mine plugged into a 210. The unit was very simple and quick to put together. I put this thing together in under 10 minutes. If you are interested in purchasing the laser pecker, I will have an Amazon affiliate link down below, so I, I will get a kickback if you want to help support the channel. But it does not come with this really cool roller accessory, which I do highly recommend getting this unit with the laser unit. This will allow you to go from engraving flat surfaces to engraving cylindrical surfaces, but uh, more on that in a bit. In this video, I will be going over who is this for and my final thoughts at the end of the video. But right now, I'm just, I'm so excited to share with you all the different things that I was able to do with this laser engraver. But uh, before we get into that, I guess I, I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial on how to use this thing. So after you plug this in, you wanna go ahead and connect it to your phone via Bluetooth. This blue blinking light means not connected yet. So open up the Laser Pecker app, go into settings, Bluetooth device connection. Bam, it's connected. Solid light means you're golden. For your first project, I suggest going to their examples and they have a host of free vectors for you to choose from. Choose your vector, type in the width. You want the laser to be 110 millimeters from your project. There's three ways that you can accomplish that. You can simply use a measuring device from the laser head to the project. What I ended up doing most of the time was using this protective shield because this is exactly 110 millimeters from the bottom to the head. Or it has this little arm that comes down. This is exactly 110 millimeters from the bottom of this arm to the head of the laser. Use the arrows on the side of the base to lower it and raise it. One tap will lower it in increments. Hard press will lower it down all the way. Use the preview feature to center your project. Make sure you put your safety goggles on first because this is a laser, it will burn your retinas. Hit next. The data will transfer from your phone to the unit. Then we pick our material. The software will have a predetermined depth and power for each material, but you can play with that and dial those in. But we're gonna stick with what it has and hit start. That's it. Easy as that. That's one of the things I love most about this unit is the software is so user friendly and easy to use. This was my very first project. I was able to set up very quickly and hit the ground running. But let's let's get into all the different things I was able to do with this uh, simple 2D mode. And these are some of the things that I just kind of started off with just playing around, seeing how it works, seeing how it goes. But then I, I wanted to move on to more practical applications, like branding, obviously. 
And you can do this on multiple materials, obviously wood. You can even do different metals like dog tags, lighter, found all sorts of different things at the dollar store. You could do leather or vinyl. I, I even did some uh, thick cardstock, but I, I, but I read that you can even do paper. You could go crazy with cork material and coasters and stuff. And yes, it even etches concrete beautifully. Now, of course, these are just straight up vectors, very simple to work with, but you can also do pictures. So you could either take a picture, send it to the unit, or choose a picture that you already have. Of course, I have thousands of pictures of Maisie, so the hard part was choosing which one to use. So this is the one I chose. But you can choose how dark the lines get. Uh, there's a couple different modes you can go through too, whether it's just shadows or just lines. We, of course, could not leave mittens out. And one of the things I was kind of blown away about was the detail. You can even see the detail of her whiskers. So very crazy, very detailed. Just being somebody that's crafty, uh, imagine all the cool personalized gifts that you can do. Somebody that is owns a crafty business, think of all the personalized pictures you could sell on Etsy. I'm just saying. Now, one of the things I was very interested in as somebody that makes concrete molds was can it do foam material? Just playing around with it, I did this real quick. To, uh, to be honest with you, this did take some dialing in. Uh, I melted the first couple. So you really gotta play around with the power and the depth. Now again, it did take some dialing in, but I was able to accomplish cutting out some letters. But this would be great for those personalized embossed concrete molds. Now, as a woodworker, I was very interested to see how this did with cutting wood. They are not marketing this as a laser cutter, but it can do it, as long as your material is not thicker than five millimeter. But specifically, I was interested to see if I could do some wood inlays, and I uh, cut out these small fret markers, and you could inlay these no problem but they turned out great, very easy to do, and the detail was insane, especially with how small these were. Like this ball of flame, I was even able to cut out this little tiny piece of the flame. So even though it's not supposed to be able to do this, uh, I was pretty damn impressed for how well it did it. So as far as wood is concerned, very easy to do. Uh, I usually stuck around a power of 100, and I stuck between anywhere between a depth of 5% up to a depth of about 15% when I wanted them to be a little bit deeper. As far as metal was concerned, this was a little tougher to accomplish, but the, the engraver doesn't like to engrave things that are shiny or transparent. So you have to give the laser beam something to focus on. So a great way to do this was to either use a dry spray lubricant or just take a marker and put marker over the whole thing, engrave it, and then just simply clean off the marker afterwards. Now, of course, it will take longer with things like metal and glass. You wanna have the power up to 100 and the depth up to 100, which will result in a longer runtime. But the, the same thing with glass, I was able to etch the glass, but you have to put marker on it, otherwise the laser will just go straight through to the bottom. I was even able to do some acrylic. You probably can't see. It. So I was able to do some acrylic you just, again, you wanna be very careful with the power and the depth, otherwise you'll melt it. But again, I went over this with marker first, wiped it off afterwards. But labeling, labeling in general, that's where this machine really shines. Again, pick something like this up at the dollar store. It has this great anodized top. You can label your nuts and bolts. You can, I even made these great wooden tool drawer labels. Just simply hit the create button, enter in the text, choose whatever font you want, choose the width, don't forget to preview, send it to the machine, put your goggles on, set your power and depth, and go. 57 seconds. Again, great for organization, and it looks fantastic, and it was super easy. I, when we get carry out, I always save the plastic carry out Tupperware. And these make for great organization and screw storage. All I did was simply spray painted the lid, etched it. Now I've got some great organization going on in my drawers. <laughs> we really don't need to know what's going on in your drawers, Michael. I even personalized my notebook. Why not? 
Now, that's just a couple of things that you can do with the laser pointing straight down. But what is also great about this machine, you can loosen it from the base, tilt it, and you can etch things that are on an angle. Got this at the dollar store. You wouldn't believe all the things that you can find at the dollar store. Cool little recipe holder. Again, great gift ideas. Or you can brand this with your business and completely stand out from everybody else's business cards. Not that anybody cooks a lot these days, but uh, again, who would not want this? If you get the roller accessory, now you can give it a third access and do rotary items. Just place the roller accessory on the base, hook up the neck wire to the USB port on the side. With the extra USB wire, hook up the laser head to the USB-C port on the side. Now, before you load your image into the system, tap on the drop-down menu, go to More Settings, turn the third access on, and choose Cylinder Mode. Then you can load your image, set the width, then set the power and the depth, hit start, the machine and the roller accessory knows what to do after that. Now you've got this whole other host of ideas that you can etch with. Again, got this at the dollar store. Want somewhere cool to put your loose change? I've gone ahead and scribed coins on the side and gave it a decorative Celtic knock design. Again, how much could you sell this for on Etsy? What's on tap? How about some cake? How about some really cool cake handles with your favorite beer? Again, another dollar store item. Cool pencil holder. And this is what I think that most people are gonna use this accessory for is a tumblers. It really shines on anodized or painted tumblers. And either personalize it or put your company logo on there. If you're running a printing business, put your client's logo on here. Again, another great gift idea or another great way to make your company stand out. The other cool thing about this accessory is that you can turn it into something called slab mode. If you flip the accessory over, underneath you're gonna find some ball bearing dollies magnetized underneath. Pretty cool, right? Put these in the front and in the back. And now you can take a, a longer piece of material and it will actually feed its way through. Now you're still bound by a four inch height, but now you can go as long as you want. Just be very mindful of where you place these little ball bearing trolleys because if you place them in the wrong spot, uh, it can get jacked up on the end, especially if your piece is a little bit bowed, it might catch on the end. But again, just simply go into the app, pull down menu, more settings, turn your third axis on, and select slab mode. The last and one of the coolest modes that this thing has, this mode is called trolley mode. You can actually flip the rotary accessory over, take your two ball bearing rollers, Turn them upside down. They magnetize to the front. Use the mounting bracket that comes with it. They actually have shapes on both ends so that you can't get it wrong. Take the laser head off the mount. Mount it on the bracket. Plug it into the UBC. And you basically turned it into a Roomba. As it etches, it will move backwards. You are still bound by your four inch height, but now you can engrave as far as you want, as long as your cord reaches. Turn your third axis on and select trolley mode. Now I can make images or words four inches by however long I want. I used it as an opportunity to uh, brand my workbench. Now, a word of caution on trolley mode. Depending on the texture of the surface that you're trolleying along on, it tends to wander a little bit. So I uh, strongly suggest that if you can screw down or double stick tape some rails down to the surface for something that the trolley to ride along to stay straight, highly suggest that. Uh, I do feel like these wheels could benefit from some sort of rubber coating to eliminate that problem. Otherwise, you get this fantastic personalized result. <laughs> and since I can easily remove the laser head from the stand, I can pretty much engrave whatever I want. I don't wanna burn my guitar, but I gotta.
Nice. Let's do another one. <laughs> oh man. Huh? That is so f***ing cool. Down in the <laughs> what, what else could I do? <laughs> I'm gonna put my logo literally on everything. Alright, so who is this even for? Honestly, everybody. Whether you're someone that owns a business or you're just an extra crafty person looking to up their crafty game, you can use this unit as a way to stand out. They even have a feature on the app to where you can print off barcodes. You simply type in your SKU number and it actually creates a barcode for you. You can even use this to stamp QR codes on either the boxes or the product. So let's say that you wanna drive traffic to a website or your YouTube channel. Just simply copy and paste the link onto the app and it will create a QR code for you. And then just etch it on whatever you want. But my, my final thoughts on the Laser Pecker 2 is that this is a great unit for a decent price to do so many different things with so many different applications. The unit and the software is uncomplicated, which made it so easy for a new user to just hit the ground running. I feel like this is going to add a level of professionalism to either your business or your hobby that'll make you stand out from all the rest. I was also very impressed that this laser is strong enough to etch metal, but you can dial it down to where it can etch delicate things like food, like this graham cracker. Why not? Uh, some of the things I had trouble with was wood was very easy. Stayed 100% at like between five or 15% depth. You're good to go. Other materials, uh, they took a little bit of dialing in, but once I got things dialed into like say either plastic or vinyl or leather, uh, I just wrote those down so that I can remember them for next time, no big deal. Trolley mode, definitely make sure that you have some sort of straight edge for that to follow. And the, so the only gripe I have about the software is that I do wish that they had uh, an option for you to choose the unit of measurement. Uh, this is in millimeters, and I found it very cumbersome to constantly convert from millimeters to the more superior inches. But uh, I just downloaded a conversion app. No big deal, I guess. But I think that there are definitely more projects that need to be explored here. There were so many other ideas I had that I knew I couldn't fit in this one video. With acrylics, I would love to try to etch thicker acrylics and and explore some LED options. I couldn't get this to do what I wanted it to, but uh, again, not enough time to fit this all into one video. So we'll explore that in another video. I, I also want to explore more woodworking applications, specifically like say guitar making and inlays for sure. There are, there are so many more different things that we could do with this, like we'll say like the sound hole inlays or just personalization in woodworking in general. I uh, would like to apologize to all my family members that are going to get some really cheesy ass personalized gifts this year for Christmas. I'm really sorry. But uh, let me know if you want to see more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.